Welcome to the channel, everyone. In today's video, we'll be doing a full tutorial of the Fidelity Active Trader Pro platform. I'm gonna be doing my very best to get you guys as comfortable in here as possible, covering all the basics. Everything from creating watch lists to customizing charts to actually placing trades inside of here. So as you might expect, there is a lot of information to cover and this is probably gonna end up being a long video. So please feel free to use those timestamps down below to jump ahead to a specific topic if you need to. Now jumping right into it, in order for us to actually download the platform to our computer, what we will need to do is log into our Fidelity online account. Once we've got our Fidelity account open and we're all logged in, all we have to do is come up here to this top toolbar and find the accounts and trade tab. From there, once we click on it, we're gonna see a little drop down menu open up down below and all we need to do is click on the button marked Active Trader Pro. From this screen, we're gonna see a nice little picture of what the Active Trader Pro platform will look like on our computer, but all we have to do is find and click on that big blue button marked Get Active Trader Pro. Now, as soon as you click on that, it is gonna start running the installation process, but you are gonna to have to run through all the steps to get it downloaded to your computer. Once you're done, from now on, you're gonna have a little Active Trader Pro desktop icon somewhere on your computer, and then from now on to access it, all you have to do is click on it, type in the same user ID and password that you're used to typing in, and then we'll have the platform pulled up. Now, as soon as you get logged into Active Trader Pro, you're gonna see a screen that looks a whole lot like this. Now, don't worry, I know it's a lot to look at, but we're gonna break this entire platform down as simply as possible, and we're gonna start with the overall navigation of the tool. So to begin with, looking up here in the upper right-hand corner of the app, you'll see a few menu icons up there. So right there, we can see settings, help, legal, fidelity.com, and logout. And in all honesty, the only one that you're gonna access frequently is going to be the settings tab. Now, just like it sounds, this is where you guys can come to change the overall platform settings. That would include things like order defaults, the color scheme of the platform, and some various other things that we're gonna talk about here in just a minute. Looking right below that, we can also see our tools menu here. So right there, you'll see tabs marked accounts, trade and orders, quotes and watch lists, options, and then a few others just to the right of that. Now, these tabs are actually how you're gonna access the various tools on the platform. For example, if you guys were to click on one of these tabs, like let's say the charts tab, we go ahead and click on that. From there, we can access a new chart if we wanted to. So if we were to click on that, you're gonna see a little pop-up window come up and we could actually throw another symbol in here, like let's say Apple, AAPL, and hit enter. And now we can see another chart on our platform and that's exactly what each one of these different tabs does. It adds a different tool to our screen. Now there are a lot to go through and don't worry, we're gonna talk about as many of them as I can, but really we're gonna focus on the ones that I think you're actually gonna be using on a daily basis. But for right now, let's go ahead and exit out of this one. Now moving off of those, the very last tab up there that you'll see is the layouts tab. This tab will allow us to navigate to the different layouts that we've made or customized for ourselves or the ones that Fidelity has made for us. Now, for those of you wondering, a layout is simply all of this. It's all of the tools that we have displayed on this page, where we've put them and the different ways that we've customized them. So for example, if I were to click on this layouts tab here, you can see I currently have the option trader selected and what the option trader layout basically is, is all of this that we're looking at, all of these various tools. So at the moment on the option trader layout, you can see up here, I've got a positions tab showing me all the current positions in the account. Right below that, I've got an option chain opened up. To the right of that, I've got a nice little chart of SoFi, some option statistics down here below, as well as a watch list over here on the right. All of those tools and where I've placed them is what makes up a layout. And I'm gonna show you here in just a minute how you guys can make some layouts for yourself. But before we dive too deep into that, let's focus on how we can adjust some of the overall platform settings on here first. So what we're gonna do is come up here to the settings menu up here in the upper right hand corner, go ahead and click on that. From there, you're gonna see all of the settings that we can adjust down below, like general, trade, orders, that kind of stuff. In our case, the very first one we're gonna go over is the general settings, and really these are more of like the appearance settings for the platform. So right here in this pop-up window, if we look down here below for the theme color, this is something many of you guys might wanna change, and at the moment you can see I currently have the black theme selected. If we wanted to take a look at what these other themes look like, we come up here to the white theme and go ahead and click on that, and you're gonna see my whole platform changes color. If we weren't a huge fan of that, we could come down to the blue theme and see what that one looks like. And we can kind of pick and choose which one we like better. For me, I prefer the black background. So I'm gonna go back to the black theme. And just to the right of that, we've got the sidebar mode. And at the moment, I've got the right sidebar selected, but we could always flip that around if we wanted to be on the left-hand side, if we wanted on both sides, or if we never wanted a sidebar to show up, this is where we could select that. In my case, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it as the right-hand side, because that's what I'm used to. And then just to the right of that, we also have the ability to change the overall font size on the platform. So if we wanted to increase the font size a little bit, maybe we have a hard time seeing the words here, we could always scroll this over to the right, increase the font size quite a bit. 
Or we could of course drag it back over to the left if the font size was just fine for us or if we wanted to minimize it even further. Now, of course, there are some other settings on this page, but we're gonna move on to the next one up here. So come on up here to the General tab, go ahead and click on that. And we're gonna go ahead and click on the Trade button right here below. Now, the reason we came to this one next is because we're gonna go over how to change the order defaults on this platform next. And at the moment, you can see I've got two tabs up here, Stock Defaults as well as Option Defaults. Now, an order default is simply when we go to place a trade, how many shares do we want to automatically go in our order ticket, and what type of order do we want to use, how long do we want that order good for, that is what an order default is. So for example, when I'm trading stock, let's say I typically trade 10 shares at a time, so that's what I want automatically to appear in my order ticket. So I'm going to come over here to the stock defaults. From there, you can see the very first box is a quantity box, and in my case, I'm going to specify 10, saying anytime I build out an order on a stock, I want 10 shares to automatically pop up. The next thing I'm gonna do is actually set the order type. Let's say I wanted it to always be a limit order and I want it always just good for the day, let's say. So now that I got my stock order default set, the next thing I'm gonna do is do it for my options contracts as well. So we're gonna come over here to options defaults. I'm gonna come down here to the quantity box and I'm gonna say I typically only trade one option contract at a time. I'm again gonna set a limit order and again, good for the day. So now that I'm happy with all of these settings that we adjusted, if I come down here and hit apply, all of those will take effect. So now in the example of our order default, if I came up here and clicked on, let's say the current asking price for SoFi up here, you're gonna see an order ticket automatically gets built out to buy 10 shares at the current limit price, good for the day. But I think you guys get the idea that is where you guys are gonna go to change the overall platform settings for Active Trader Pro. Now moving off of that, let's next go over how you guys can create some layouts for yourself. Now in my case, if I were to go ahead and click on the layouts tab up here, you can actually see the two tabs that I've actually created for myself, the chart layout and the day trade layout. All of the ones that you see below this, starting with investor and then all the way down to Kirkman trader, these are all the ones that Fidelity automatically creates for you and you can use them. If we were to come up here to the investor layout, go ahead and click on this and say, yes, we want to save all of the changes that we made to this one. You'll see a brand new layout open up, and for me personally, this is not very useful, but you can access all of these layouts simply by clicking on the one that you want to go to. So if I wanted to go to my chart layout, we would simply click on it, and now you can see that all this one is is a very large chart, in this case, of Facebook. Now, in order for us to start fresh and create a brand new layout for herself, what we're going to do is come up here to the Layouts tab, and then come down to the very bottom and select New Layout. Now, as soon as we click on that, a little window will come up and actually ask us what we want to name this layout. In my case, I'm just going to name it a practice layout, just so I know what we did here. And we'll go ahead and hit OK. So now you can see here, all we have is a blank slate to work from. So now we can start adding the tools that we find most useful. Now, keeping in mind, in order to actually access all of those tools that we can add, that's what these tabs are for up here. Remember, that's what all of these little drop down windows are. And the very first thing I want to add is actually a chart. So I'm going to come over here to the charts tab. I'm going to hit new chart. And now that I've got that little pop up here, I'm going to kind of fit it where I'd like it. So we'll put it over here on the left hand side and squeeze it in nicely. So it fits right here. And I'm actually going to add one more right below that one. So adding another chart here, we'll go ahead and fit this one in right below the top one here. The next thing I'm going to do is actually add a couple symbols in here just so we can actually see those charts. So Google on the top one, and we'll add Facebook on the bottom one. Now that we've added a couple charts to this layout, we could always come up here to, let's say the accounts tab. And let's say I always wanna keep track of all of the positions I have in my account right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. From there, it opens up another little window. And in my case, it's showing me all of the positions I hold and the only one I have is on SoFi. But we're gonna go ahead and click on that. And let's say I wanted to drag it over here. And actually I wanna put it on the bottom of this. Now, finally, let's come up here and let's say we were looking for one last thing. I'm going to come up here to the trade and orders tab and let's say we're looking for directed trade and extended hours. I'm going to go ahead and click on that and I'm going to fit it in this large last box that I've got right here. Now, you guys don't have to do this, but I'm actually going to link this tool to this chart right here. And all the link does is it makes it so if I change one of these, both change to match. Now, it's easier for me to show you that rather than explain it. So let's come up here to this little linking button just to the left of the symbol. I'm going to go ahead and click on this, and I'm going to link it to gray. Now, because I want both of these two tools linked together, I'm going to go ahead and link this one to gray as well. And you're going to see that Google will automatically appear on the right-hand side once I type it in and hit enter. So again, these two tabs will always be linked together. If I change one, they will both change to match. So if I came up here to this tab, and instead of typing in Google, we typed in... Let's say Microsoft MSFT, you're now going to see this tool on the right also changes to Microsoft. 
Now, if you guys couldn't tell, all this tool is is a little order ticket up here at the top so I could place a trade while also seeing the level two data as well as the time and sales information over here on the right hand side. But I hope you guys get the idea. You guys can really customize your pages to see whatever information is most valuable to you. So really come in here to these tabs, play around with it, see what you like. And I do want to mention that you guys can create as many layouts as you want. You can have as many as you want and flip between them as you see fit by coming up here to the layouts tab and then selecting the layout that you want to go to. But moving on from that, the next thing I wanted to cover is how you guys can create a watch list inside of this tool. Now, in my case, I don't even have a watch list on this layout at the moment. So the first thing I'm going to do is come up here to the quotes and watch list tab. I'm going to come down here and select watch list. Now, as soon as I do that, a little watch list pops up and I'm going to go ahead and drag this over to my right toolbar and just let go of it. And you'll see it squeezes into fit. Now, at the moment, you can look in the upper left hand corner to see the name of this watch list. In this case, it's called the options watch list. And down below, we can see all of the symbols that I've added to this one. So there we can see Apple, Chewy, Chewy again for some reason, Microsoft, and SoFi. And then just to the right of that, we can see what those stocks last traded for and how much they were up or down for the day. Now, even though we can't see them, there are actually quite a few other columns up there at the top. So if I came down here to this little scroll bar down here and scrolled to the right, I can also see the percent change for the day, the bid, the ask, the volume, so how many shares were traded today, real-time analytics, and you can see there's a bunch of stuff over there on the right-hand side. Now, in order for me to flip to the other watch list that I've made for myself, all I have to do is come up here to the name of the watch list I currently have selected. And then down below, I can access the watch list I've made for myself. And here we can see options, options watch list, and practice watch list. So if I were to come back up to my options watch list, select that, you can see this one's got quite a few more companies inside of it. Now, later down the line, if I decided to make a brand new watch list for myself, all I would have to do is come up here to the manage tab and go ahead and click on that. From there, you're going to see a bunch of different options, which we're going to get to in just a minute, but we're actually going to hit the create a new watch list button to create a brand new one for ourselves. Now you can see in that pop up window, the very first thing it's going to ask us is what we want to name this watch list. In my case, I'm just going to go ahead and name it test one here. And then down below, we can start adding some symbols to it. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and just start throwing in some random ones here. Coin, PayPal, Facebook, Netflix, and let's say we're happy with those four. So I'm going to come down here and hit the create button. So now that I'm done with that, we can actually see my brand new watch list over here, test one, and then all of the symbols that I just added to it just below. Now, if later down the line, I decide to add some additional symbols to this list, all I have to do is come back up here to the manage button, and then this time select edit watch list. From there, we would just do the exact same thing as before and just add a few more symbols. Let's say we wanted to add square and let's say Nike, NKE. And again, now that we're happy with that, we'll just go ahead and hit apply. And we can now see those two additional symbols that we just added. And the last thing I'll show you is how you guys can change the column headers up here at the top. So the information that's being displayed. So just like before, we're going to come up here to the manage button. And this time we're going to select add and remove columns. From there, we can then see all of the columns we currently have selected over here on the right hand side and the placement for those columns. Then over here on the left hand side, we can actually unselect the ones we no longer want to see and select the ones we do want to see. So if I were to scroll through this, you can see there are a crazy amount of columns or information that we could display. So looking through this, let's say I wanted to add, for some reason, the dividend date to my columns over here. And now you can see it's been added to the very bottom. Let's say I wanted to move that up a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and click on it, hit the little up arrow and move it up to the very, very top because it's the very first thing that I want to see. Now that I'm happy with that, I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. And now over here on the watch list, the very first thing I see is the dividend date and then the symbol, last traded price, and so on. But that's just about it in terms of how you guys can create some watch lists for yourself in here. It's not too crazy, pretty easy to do. Now, moving on from that, the next thing I wanted to go over is how you guys can actually place trades in this platform. And we're going to start by going over how to buy and sell stock inside of here. Now, we could do it from the screen we're looking at right now, but instead, I'm actually going to come up here to the Layouts tab and flip back over to my Day Trade uh, layout. We're going to confirm that, yes, we do want to save all the changes that we made, and now I've got my Day Trade layout up in front of me. Now, before we actually go through several different examples of how to do this, I will say there are many different ways to buy and sell stock on here. And the very first example is by coming up here to the upper left-hand corner and hitting the Trade button. Now, as soon as I do that, a little trade ticket will come up and we've got to fill out the entire order ticket in this case. So right here, you can actually see that the very first thing it asks us is what do we even want to trade? So let's say we wanted to buy some shares of PayPal. We're going to come up here and type in PYPL, hit enter on the keyboard. From there, the very next thing it's going to ask us is what do we actually want to do? So if I click on this action tab here, it's going to ask us, do we want to buy stock? Do we want to sell stock? Do we want to buy to cover or do we want to sell short? 
In my case, let's say we wanted to buy some shares of PayPal. We thought PayPal was gonna go up from here. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the buy tab. Right below that, you can see my quantity box auto filled at 10 shares, but of course I could always change that. Let's say I only wanted to buy two shares, type in two right there. Now, right below that, the very next thing it's gonna ask us is what type of order do we wanna use? In our case, we're using a limit order, meaning we are specifying a price. If we wanted to change that, we could always come down here to the order type box, click on the word limit, and you can see all of the other order types available to you. Market orders, stop orders, trailing stop orders, you got a bunch of options to choose from. Now in my example, I still wanna use a limit order, and right below that, we're actually gonna specify the price. So in my case, I'm gonna say, I only wanna buy these shares of PayPal if PayPal goes down to 105 a share. So I'm typing in 105 right here. Now right below that, the very next thing it's gonna ask us is how long do we want this order good for? In my case, you can see I currently have a day order only saying if I don't buy these two shares today for 105 a share each, go ahead and cancel the order. If I wanted to change that, of course, I could click on the word day here and you can see there are several different options. Really, the only other one that you're probably gonna use is gonna be good until canceled. Now that simply means if I don't buy these shares today for 105, try again tomorrow. If it doesn't happen tomorrow, try again the next day and the next day and so on until it either fills or until I cancel the order. So let's say we did wanna do that. We wanna make it a good until cancel order. And then finally, the very last thing it's gonna ask us is to set conditions. So if I click on that right there, you can see the only condition available to me is do not reduce. Now, all this means is if this company pays a dividend, I do not want my limit price, my price of 105 to be reduced by the dividend amount. This is something I don't think you guys will ever use, but I wanted you to know it is an option. So in our case, we'll just hit none here. Besides that, if we're happy with this order ticket, again, we're about to say we wanna buy two shares of PayPal. If it ever drops to 105 a share, good until canceled. If we were happy with it, we would simply hit the preview button down below. From there, all it would do is give me a little order confirmation, but in my case, it says I do not have enough money to do this trade, so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit okay and exit out of it. But that is one way that you guys can place a trade inside of this platform. Now, besides that, anytime you guys see an asking price or a bid price, if you were to click on that number, that is another way to build out an order ticket inside of this platform. So for example, if we were to come down to my watch list over here, my options watch list, and we were to scroll over to where the current bid and asking price is at, looking over here at the current price for Apple, you can see the current ask is 178.37. If I were to click on that, it's gonna open up an order ticket to buy myself 10 shares of Apple at its current price, 178.37. If I were to instead come over here to the bid price and click on the bid price for Apple, it's gonna flip over to a sell ticket. So now I've got an order ticket here to sell 10 shares of Apple stock. So that is another way to build out an order ticket on the platform. Now, besides those two, if you saw over here, I actually added a little active trader button over here, and, and this is another way to place trades on here. At the moment, you can see that these two tabs are linked together, so automatically it's building me out an order ticket to buy some positions on Google. In this case, I'm about to buy one share with a limit price of $28.75, good for the day. If I needed to change any of this stuff, like let's say I wanted to buy five shares instead of one, I could always type in five over here. If I wanted to change the price to so let's say 2,800 even, I could of course come over here and type in 2,800. Once I'm happy with that, I would simply come down to the preview button and select that, confirm the order and send it out there to actually get a fill on it. Now, the final way we'll talk about in today's video on how to place a trade is by simply coming over here to the chart and right clicking anywhere on the chart itself. As soon as I do that, it's gonna bring up a very large menu of many different options, but the ones we're focusing on is where it says buy, sell, buy to cover and sell short. So let's say in this example, I actually wanted to short a position on Google. I'm gonna go ahead and click on sell short here. And just like before, it brings up a little order ticket to sell a position of Google. So right here, I'm about to sell 10 shares at a limit price of, let's say, in this case, 3,000. So if it ever goes up to 3,000, I want to sell 10 shares of Google stock. In this case, I only want it good for the day. And if I was happy with this, I actually wanted to submit this short if this ever happened. Again, I would hit preview, submit the order. But I think you guys get the idea. It's nothing too crazy. Now, besides this, if we go ahead and exit this out of here, the next thing I want to show you is how you guys can close out positions you already have in your account. Now, in my case, if you look over here on the right hand side, I already have a tool for my current positions. But if you guys don't have this, all you have to do is come up here to the accounts tab. From there, you would select the button mark positions, and then it's going to open up this exact same window. Now, from this window, we can actually see the current positions in my account. So in my case, you can see I've got SoFi. And if I were to click on that little arrow to the left, you can see I only have one share of stock and I bought it for $9.47. Now from here, if I decided to sell this one share of SoFi stock, what I could do is either come up here to the SoFi symbol and just right click on it. And then from here, select sell. 
Then you can see here what I'm doing is automatically selling my entire position. As of right now, it's only one share of stock. The other thing I could do is hit that little weird icon to the right hand side. Just go ahead and click on that and you'll see the same exact menu pops up down below and I would just select sell. Now in my case, let's say I actually did want to submit this order and I want to sell one share of SoFi if it ever goes up to, let's say 20 bucks a share. So I'm going to specify 20. I'm going to make it a good until cancel order. And now that I'm happy with that, I'm going to go ahead and hit preview here. You're going to see my little order confirmation and I'm actually going to hit place this time. Looking here at my order confirmation, you can see that the order has been received. And if I exit out of this, and if we were to come over here to the right hand side, we would normally see it right here in this little order status section. And if you guys don't have this to add it, you'd simply come up here to trade and orders and select orders down here below. Now, in my case, I'm placing this when the market is closed, so they haven't actually submitted the order, and that's why I can't see it over here. But normally, you guys would see your working orders over here on the right-hand side. Now, moving on from that, let's next go over how you guys can trade options in this platform. So let's go ahead and exit out of this little pop-up window right here. And this time, I'm going to come up here to the Layouts tab and go over to the Option Trader layout. We are going to go ahead and save this layout, make sure we save any changes, and now I've got my Option Trader layout up in front of me. Now, keeping in the back of your mind, you never actually had to come to this layout. If you guys wanted to trade options from the previous screen, you would simply come up here to the Options tab, then come on down to the Option Chain if we just wanted to add an Option Chain to our previous screen. We never have to come to this page. In my case, I'm just a fan of the way that Fidelity automatically lays out this information, so I just like to come here when I want to trade options. I like the way they already have it laid out for us. Now, looking over here on the left-hand side, we can see an option chain already built out, and in this case, it's built out for SoFi. Looking down below that, you can see a lot of information, and we will get to it, but for right now, I want you to focus on this line right here, where it says April 8th, April 14th, April 22nd. That line is how we're going to add additional expirations down below, how we can see all of the expirations available for SoFi. In my case, at the moment, I only have the April 8th and April 14th option expiration open up, and that's why those are the only two displayed down below. If I instead wanted to trade, let's say, the June options, I would, of course, have to come up here and scroll to the right a little bit, find the June 17th expiration, go ahead and click on it. And now that I have, I can actually see the June 17th expiration down below, and I can see it expires in 74 days from today. Now, to avoid any confusion, I'm actually going to get rid of all of them except for one. So scrolling back over, let's get rid of everything except for the April 14th expiration. Now down below on this line, we can see the date of expiration, April 14th, and we can see how many days out that is. So 10 days out from expiration. Right below that in the center of the screen, we can see the available strike prices listed out. So seven and a half, eight, eight and a half, and it goes all the way down to 12 at the moment. If you guys wanted to see more available strikes, because of course there are more strikes available for the April 14th expiration, we could come up here to where it says 10 strikes, go ahead and click on that. From there, we could then select how many strikes we wanted to see. So in my case, so let's say I want to see 20 strikes at a time. I'm going to go ahead and click on 20 strikes here. And now you can see my list of strikes has gotten quite a bit longer. So that's how you guys are going to change that. Now, moving on from that, looking over here on the left-hand side, we can see all of the call options available. Looking on the right-hand side, we can see all of the put options available. You may also notice that the in-the-money options have a gray background, whereas the out-of-the-money options have a black background. Looking up here at the top, you can also see all of the column headers, like right now we've got the current delta, the bid and the ask, and the open interest. Now, trading options in this platform is pretty much like every other platform. Whenever you want to buy an option, you click on the ask. Whenever you want to sell an option, you click on the bid. So in this first example, let's say we were bullish on SoFi, we thought SoFi was going up, and we were looking at the $10 calls here. Looking on the left-hand side, we can see the current bid ask is $0.35 cents by $0.36. Cents. And since we want to buy it, we're going to click on the current asking price, $0.36. Cents. As soon as we click on it, you can see a little order ticket pop up right at the top there, and the very first box is showing the symbol for that option contract. Just below that, it's saying we're about to buy to open one with a limit order at $0.36, cents, good for the day. If we needed to change any of that stuff, of course we could. If we wanted to buy five contracts instead of one, we would just highlight the one there, type in five. If we only wanted to buy this contract, if it dropped down to $0.30 cents even, we could of course type in $0.30 cents here and make it a good until cancel order if we wanted to. But besides that, it's exactly like trading the stock position. You just need to fill out the order ticket, hit preview, and send it if you actually want to submit the order ticket. Doing this on a put option would be exactly the same. So let's say we were now bearish on SoFi. We thought it was going down. Looking down here at the $7.5 puts, let's say that was appealing to us. We can see over here the current bid ask is $0.02 cents by $0.04. Cents. Since we want to buy it, we're going to go ahead and click on the current ask. And just like before, it's going to bill out an order ticket for us. 
So you can see putting on single leg options in here is pretty straightforward. Now, in order for us to do a spread in here, it's slightly different. So let's go ahead and exit out of this thing. And let's say for this very first example, we wanted to put on a long vertical call spread. So we wanted to buy the 10 by $15, or in this case, 10 by $14.5 call spread. So what we're gonna do is actually come up here to the $10 call, since that's the one we're gonna be buying. And what I'm actually gonna do, instead of just left clicking on this price, is I'm actually going to right click on it. From there, it's gonna open up a little drop down menu actually asking me what I wanna do. In my case, this time we're gonna come down to trade strategy. From there, looking on the right hand side, we can see all of the spreads that it can build out for us automatically. So butterfly, buy right, collar, combo, iron condor, spread, everything that we might wanna do. In our case, we're gonna go ahead and click on the one that says spread here. And what it's gonna do is actually build out the order ticket for us. And it's not gonna build out everything for us, of course, so we've got a lot of work to do. Up here at the top, you can see that it's got the opening trade at least built out to buy to open one of the April 14th $10 calls. The thing we now need to specify is that we wanna sell the $15 calls for the same expiration. So we're gonna go ahead and first start by clicking the expiration date here, click on April 14th, then change the strike price to the 14 and a half, I believe is what we said. So now here you can see what we're essentially saying is we wanna buy one of the April 14th $10 calls while simultaneously selling one of the 14 and a half dollar calls and we're about to do so for a net debit of 35 cents. Just like before, if we wanted to change any of this stuff, like we only wanted to pay, let's say 30 cents for this vertical call spread, we could type in 30 cents here. And if we wanted it good until canceled, we could of course change that to GTC. But in the case of a vertical, this is everything we would have to do to actually submit this trade. We would just come over here to hit preview, actually make sure everything looks right, then submit the trade. Now going over that one more time, and let's instead do an iron condor this time. Let's come over here to, again, let's do the, uh, the $12 call this time. We're gonna go ahead and right click on this one. We're gonna look in that little drop down menu, come up here to trade strategy, and this time select iron condor. This time you'll see in this menu, there are four legs because of course an iron condor is composed of four different options legs, selling a call spread, selling a put spread. So what we have to do in this case, since all of the expirations are auto filled for us, is then just pick the strikes that we wanted to buy and sell. In this case, we already have the $12 call selected. So let's say the one we wanted to buy as the protective wing is gonna be at 14. And then for the puts that we're going to sell to open is going to be the eight. And we're going to buy the, let's say six. So now down below, we can see if we were to put on this iron condor, we would be doing so for a total credit of two cents. And in this case, this trade would not really make any sense. Looking down in the lower right hand corner, we can see the max gain on this trade would only be two bucks and the max loss would be $198 if we're completely wrong. But if for some reason you were happy with that, you love the risk reward with that, uh, with that trade, we would simply hit the preview button here and then send this iron condor out there. So that is how you guys can create options trades or spreads inside of Active Trader Pro. And moving on from that, the next thing we're gonna go over is how you guys can customize charts in here. So let's go ahead and get out of this order ticket. And for this example, we'll just go ahead and use this little chart I have over here on the right hand side for SoFi. Looking right here below, we can actually see how far back this chart is looking. So in this case, this chart is looking back one entire trading day and each candlestick represents one minute of trading. Now, if we wanted to change that, so if we wanted to change how far back we're looking, we could come down here to this menu down below and select, let's say one year. We wanna look back one entire year of trading data. You can see as soon as I clicked on that, it did change my frequency, which is what each one of those candlesticks represents. If I wanted to change that even further, so let's go ahead and click on the word daily here and change it to weekly instead. So now what this chart is representing is one entire year's worth of trading data for SoFi, but now each one of those green and red candles on our chart represents one entire week of trading. Down below, we can also see the volume for that period. So if I put my mouse on one of these sections, on one of these little volume bars, you can see in this case, there were 158 million shares traded that entire week. Looking just the right of that, if I move my mouse a little bit further to the right, you can see the entire week's worth of volume the following week was 159 million shares. Now, besides changing the actual time frame customizations on these, let's actually go back to a daily view. And now again, each one of these candlesticks represents a minute. If we wanted to add, let's say, technical indicators to this chart, what we could do is actually come up here to the indicators menu. Go ahead and click on that. From there, you're gonna see a list of all of the different indicators that you could add to your chart. So in my case, let's say we wanted to add these simple moving averages. So what I'm gonna do is come up here to the search box and type in the word simple up here. From there down below, we can actually see the simple moving average. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. Looking at the top of my chart, you can see what's added is the 20 day simple moving average. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and click on that because I want to modify it. So right here, we'll click on modify. 
From there, it's gonna open up a little window that's gonna allow us to edit that line. So in my case, I'm gonna go ahead and change the color of it. I'm gonna make it more of like a tealish blue color. I'm also gonna change it from the 20 period moving average to the 50 period moving average. I'm gonna type in 50 here and hit apply. The next thing I'm gonna do is actually add one more indicator. I'm gonna add the simple moving average once again, but this time we're gonna add the 200 day simple moving average. So now I've added another one, I'm gonna come up here to the new one. I'm gonna go ahead and hit modify once again. This time I'm gonna come down here to the edit box and edit this to more of a goldish color and we're gonna type in 200 in here in the period box and hit apply. So now up here at the chart, you can see I've added the 50 period SMA and the 200 period SMA. Now in my case, since I'm looking at a one minute chart, what this is showing me is the 50 minute average versus the 200 minute moving average. If I instead wanted this to be the 50 day versus the 200 day moving average, what I would have to do is come over here to the yearly chart or any time period where I can select daily here. And now up here at the top, what I'm seeing is the 50 day moving average versus the 200 day moving average. So that's gonna entirely depend on the frequency that you have selected. That's how these lines are gonna be calculated. And that's for every study that you use. Now, besides that, if you guys wanna change some basic settings about the chart, basically the appearance or the background, the little symbol that shows up here, what we could do is come up here to the settings menu. From there, you're gonna see a little chart settings menu, and this is where we could change some of the color scheme, we could add certain information, but this is where we're gonna do everything. So right here at the moment, you can see my up color is currently green, but let's say for some reason I wanted that to be, I don't know, a dark blue color, and I wanted my down color to be I don't know, this kind of weirdish red color. So now I've changed that, you can see it actually reflected on my chart up here. And what I could also do is get rid of those grids in the background, those line grids. So I'm gonna drag this all the way over to the left. I'm also gonna get rid of that watermark because I'm not a fan of SoFi just showing up on my chart here. So I'm gonna drag that all the way off to get rid of it. And then the very last thing I'm gonna do is come over here to where it says show and hide and I'm gonna include the extended hours trading session. So I'm gonna hit that little check mark box to the left. Now, before leaving this section, the other things you guys may wanna change is the actual chart type itself. So if I come up here and I click open, high, low, close, and from there we can see candlesticks, we can see line charts, mountain charts, and you guys can change this to whatever type of candlestick or line chart that you guys like to see. But now that I'm happy with that, I'll go ahead and hit apply here. And now we can see all of the changes that have taken effect to my chart. Now, finally, the last thing I'll talk about in terms of the charting on here is how you guys can draw trend lines and support and resistance lines. So in order to do that, we'll come up here to the top left-hand corner of our chart and click on the button mark draw. From there, you're gonna see a bunch of different icons right here, like a little pointer icon, the pan icon, an eraser. In our case, we're gonna click on this little line icon mark trend line. So go ahead and click on that. Now, in order for us to actually create trend lines in this platform, we actually need to click and hold down and basically drag where we want this line. So let's say in this first example, we wanted to create a trend line from the bottom of this candle to the, I don't know, the top of this candle for some reason. So what I'm gonna do is come down here to the bottom of this candle, click and hold down, and drag all the way over here to the top of this one. Once I'm happy with the positioning of it, I'm just gonna go ahead and let go. And now I've got a trend line permanently drawn on this chart. Now, if I decided to get rid of it later on, I could always come up here and go ahead and click on it. Then from there, I can actually change the settings on the line itself, like the color, the thickness of the line. But in my case, I'm just gonna go ahead and remove it. Now, besides the basic trend line, if I come back up here to the drawing tools, the other ones you guys can see up here are the Fibonacci time zones, the Fibonacci retracements, fan lines. You can see a bunch of Fibonaccis up here, but really the ones you guys are probably most popularly gonna be using are the trend line, and then the resistance line and the support line. So if we found a level of support on this chart, let's say we wanna draw a support line here, we always go ahead and do that. And let's say, I don't know, the bottom of these candles were acting as support, we'll go ahead and click there. And you can now see a support line drawn on our chart. If we then wanted to add resistance as well, we'll come up here to the drawing tool and click on resistance here. And we'll say this was our resistance point right here. And now you can see support resistance drawn on our chart. And then remember to get rid of it, just click on it, come down here and hit remove. But that's just about everything I wanted to go over in today's video. We did cover a lot and we went over it in a pretty short amount of time. I'm really hoping at least a few of you guys out there watching feel at least a little bit more comfortable with this platform after this video. But please feel free to leave me your suggestions for future video topics or any other questions down below. But like I said, that's it for today. I hope you guys all have a great rest of your week and I'll catch you on the next video.